Good evening. Jersey's government is in turmoil tonight after a minister was arrested yesterday. Deputy Jeremy Masson was released on bail last night pending further inquiries, but he was removed from his duties as Minister for Children and Education with immediate effect. No details have yet been given about the allegations against him. Eastland Jones reports. It's another disaster for John Lafondre's government. After a spate of resignations last year and a vote of no confidence, his latest ministerial appointment has been removed from his duties. In a statement last night, we were told uh, the chief minister has decided that Deputy Masson is not currently capable of fulfilling his ministerial duties, as a result of which the chief minister has removed these duties from the deputy earlier that day. We understand that Deputy Masson was arrested before being released on police bail pending uh, further inquiries. The nature of the allegations against him have not yet been confirmed. In the meantime, the Chief Minister himself will hold the children and education portfolio. Deputy Masson first took over as Children and Housing Minister after Senator Mezek's resignation last year. But he made clear his interest for education, where he'd been an assistant minister too, when Senator Valois resigned over schools reopening in January, and he temporarily stood in there too. The portfolios were rejigged and Deputy Masson became Minister for Children and Education just last month. It's not the first time police investigations have marred this government. This one comes less than two weeks after Constable Chris Taylor, a former Assistant Chief Minister, was held unfit for office by the Royal Court. He resigned from his ministerial post in August last year after a conviction for dangerous driving. In an update today, the Chief Minister reiterated his commitment to putting children first. He also said the ministerial team remains in place through an <coughs> existing delegation. These arrangements will remain in place for the foreseeable future to maintain continuity in the day-to-day -day running of the department. Jersey police have made no further comment today, confirming only that a 33-year-old man was arrested at a private address yesterday before being released on police bail. It's Lynn Jones, ITV News. In other news, today marks one year since Guernsey first went into lockdown. It marked the start of 88 days of restricted freedoms to tackle the rising number of coronavirus cases. In the States this morning, the Chief Minister thanked islanders for their help in saving lives. So let's take a look at the latest coronavirus figures now. And in Guernsey, there have been no new cases for 26 days. One active case remains. That person is in hospital. And in Jersey, no new cases today. There are currently four active cases and one is in hospital. Next, the future of one of the Channel Islands' most important travel links is in the spotlight once again. Southampton Airport has been the only daily destination available during the pandemic, and now its owners are trying to get plans passed to extend the runway, which they say are vital. But they've already been rejected twice, so will it be third time lucky? Russell Hookie is live at Jersey Airport, and Russell, what's been happening across the water? Well, good evening, uh, Jess. Very quiet, still here at Jersey Airport, one of the few places you have still been able to fly during the pandemic has been Southampton, of course, which is very useful for anyone visiting family or attending medical appointments. But the airport over there, uh, managers there say it needs to grow in order to be viable in the future. And uh, in order to allow that, the runway needs to be lengthened. Councillors have been meeting over there today to discuss whether that should happen. Flights have connected the Channel Islands to Southampton for more than 70 years. Next to London, it's one of the most important transport links to Jersey and Guernsey, and the only current UK destination for islanders in Alderney. It's our link to uh, the UK, and obviously if uh, Southampton is uh, thriving, if the airport's thriving, it means that we'll be thriving as well. But while the aircraft flying to the Channel Islands have no problem using Southampton Airport, its short runway means it's less desirable for airlines who want to fly to destinations in Europe using larger planes, and so its market share has historically been limited. Southampton would like an extra 534 feet added to its runway. The decision on whether that should go ahead doesn't fall to the city of Southampton, 
but to its neighbouring borough of Eastleigh. This extension is about making it easier for people to go on a foreign holiday, which isn't sustainable in the long run. The noise impacts per economic value are very small compared to other airports. In the past, this airport's promised jobs, but they haven't materialised. The airport claims if it's to remain viable, it needs to expand. The loss of Flybe hit Southampton hard, and it's revised its yearly passenger figures down to around half what they were in 2018. Much of that traffic coming from the Channel Islands, including people who rely on Southampton Hospital for ongoing medical treatment. My son, Kian was born with um, kidney disease. In July last year, he started dialysis. At the moment, it's not available on islands for children. That's our lifeline. We've travelled back and forth at least monthly since Kian was born. Ultimately, Southampton Airport needs to make a convincing argument over its future value to the local economy, including extra jobs it might provide. That needs to be balanced against environmental and noise concerns at a time when the movement to minimise the impact in those areas is gaining momentum. Russell Hookey, ITV News. In Guernsey, education dominated proceedings as the states met today. Up for discussion, the controversial and continually rambling saga about secondary schools. The island is still no closer to deciding on which model it's going to use. Marina Jenkins is in St. Peter Port to update us. Marina, what's the latest? Well, it certainly was a saga. Every deputy this afternoon wanted to have their say on the future of secondary education in Guernsey. Now, the government work plan seeks to remove that infamous two-school model off the table and instead focus all their energies on those three school models as the education committee says there's no point considering two schools anymore when it was so resoundingly rejected last year but deputy tina berry disagrees with that she submitted an amendment which they they've been debated this afternoon asking that all school models should be out on the table to compare in the interest of transparency i think if the community or the key stakeholders that have been feeding in, parents or, and, and members of the Assembly, like myself, don't feel that there has been full transparency, I think that's going to put delays in further down the line because it will just hang over and it will rumble and, as we've seen before, eventually it cracks and breaks. Well, instead of going to a vote, deputies have decided to defer the debate to tomorrow as 13 more would really like to have their say and make a speech on the matter. And so far it's been pretty split down the middle, some saying there's absolutely no point considering two schools anymore as they don't want history repeating itself and others really saying that they want all the models on the table as they think it's important to compare. But yes, we'll, be, we'll bring you the update on the vote as it comes in tomorrow and uh, there'll be more on our website, itv.com slash channel. Marina, thank you. Now, Guernsey knows when it will host the Ireland Games. The event will take place from the 8th to the 14th of July 2023. It was supposed to take place this year, but was postponed due to the pandemic. Now, Sark is famous for not having any cars. Instead, your options are tractors and bikes. But a new vehicle has been causing quite a stir because it's powered by electricity, not diesel. The electric tracker, the tractor there is thought to be one of the first in the British Isles. Hamish Alsker has been to find out more. This is the new kid on the block in Sark. Almost silent, it's the island's first electric tractor, run almost entirely from solar panels. We were using another tractor, um, a diesel Massey Ferguson but um, we ended up not being able to use it. As we went off grid not too long ago, um, we thought it was just the perfect solution. It's just that they're so brand new. A tractor needs to produce a lot of power for the work it does. Um, and up until this point, there just hasn't been the battery capacity for them. But now, um, they are much better. It's 25 horsepower, uh, four-wheel drive, we use this tractor for all manner of jobs on the estate and uh, that can range from log splitting to delivering those logs. Battery life is quite difficult to determine but if you're using it on full whack you'll probably get eight hours out of it. We tend to plug the tractor in in the morning so that the sun charges it rather than our backup generators 
Um, depending on how much we've used it recently, we'll put it on for a couple of hours or maybe four, and then it's fully charged ready for the next day. Arriving on the island at the end of last year, the electric tractor is now an established part of La Seigneurie Estate. But will we see fewer of these on Sark's roads in future? Sark sells itself as car free and therefore sustainable, um, but it sort of counters itself by having lots of diesel tractors. Yes, I do think they're um, the next step. The electric tractor may not be big enough to do heavy duty ploughing jobs or take large loads up the Harbour Hill, but at La Seigneury, it more than pulls its weight. Hey, Michelle Scary, ITV News. And finally, if you've been suffering from a bit of cabin fever recently, it seems you're not alone. After a long winter, these Jersey cows were positively jumping for joy in the spring sunshine today. This footage was taken by farmer Becky Jose as her herd excitedly returned to their field in St. Martin. Brilliant. Well, let's see if we've got some weather to be jumping for joy about. Here's Sophie. Making the most of the day. ITV Channel Islands Weather. Sponsored by Shaw. Mobile, broadband and home phone. Good evening. I hope you've had a lovely day. We certainly started off with some fairly decent sunshine first thing this morning, but we are seeing one or two little showers continuing to creep in as they have done this afternoon with a band of fairly persistent rainfall moving across us tomorrow and certainly some cloud into the start of Saturday. But after that, it really does look very promising and I'll come on to that in just a moment. But tonight we do have one or two showers moving across the area and some cloud cover. Now, when we don't get any cloud cover, temperatures will fall away, but actually on the whole, with the light winds coming in from the south it won't feel too chilly out there we're looking at overnight lows somewhere around seven or eight degrees however temperatures don't climb much tomorrow we are going to see a lot more in the way of cloud possibly one or two showers by mid-morning for guernsey and then by lunchtime for jersey sweeping their way across the islands probably amounting to between four and eight millimeters and actually possibly the odd rumble of thunder and some hail the winds picking up from the west and temperatures struggling highs of 10 or 11 degrees times of high water view somewhere around 4 35 o'clock sea temperature 8.8 .8 degrees but it looks as though those temperatures and the sunshine return by the end of the weekend itv channel island weather sponsored by Shaw. and that's your itv news in the channel islands tonight a reminder that james is going to be back with the latest for you at 10 30 but for now from me and all the team bye-bye